So how, what's the solution? So how do we get that? So well, here's I, the I, thing. I, we got to recognize that wealth is intergenerationally created. Mm -hmm. Most people who get rich don't get rich in a lifetime. Oprah, that's once in a while. Bill Gates, that's once in a while. Most people are intergenerational wealth. That means what? That if black people want to catch up, yeah, we have to start it. saving wealth and passing it to the next generation. Our biggest problem ain't that we're splurging. Is that every time we splurge, we're stealing from our descendants. You're giving them no inheritance to get started with. But the white child, they're starting out $100,000 plus, a million, a million dollars plus. And I think we have to become more strategic in the way that we do our health plans as well as our life insurance plans. Because what I'm learning with a lot of these white folk, a lot of them are getting their first, uh, uh, what you want to call a shock of wealth through the life insurance policy of their parents. We, we, we talk about that too, yeah, yeah, so life insurance policy. Yeah. Yeah. So there's so many different strategies towards wealth that we're not even thinking about because black people, our selfishness, it's also based on our, what you want to call it, emergency consciousness, survival instinct. We're only worrying about our life. We do not think about those who come after us. Now, you got to realize now, when we got out of slavery, white folks been already building a wealth for a couple centuries. Right, right. We started behind the eight ball. Okay? So you got to play catch up. How do you catch up with somebody who's 100 yards in front of you? You have to run faster than they are. Right, right, that means right. we have to sacrifice our spending habits more than everyone else in order to catch up. How does a people who are at the bottom waste money more than people who are at the top? So not only are you not catching up, you're not even thinking, thinking about, about it. Yeah. trying to catch up. Um, we This is good. And we got a thousand questions and mm -hmm. we know you got a flight. Mm -hmm. We appreciate the time. Thank you. No problem. One, one fat get meat juicy point. Mm -hmm. what, what would it be well, before you go? Uh, I would say that we have to build our own schools. Everything we're talking about, the only way it becomes normalized, the only way it becomes a part of the collective black consciousness is if the children are raised with it as a group. Remember, all progress is group work, it's teamwork. That means we need all the children in Jackson to be taught the principles of financial empowerment. All the children of Jackson to be taught how to eat healthy. All the children of Jackson to understand what black family means and why it's so important. Until then, it's just a specialty. As we spoke earlier, diet being a specialty, wealth is a specialty. Think about it. If you're black and you're in the know about money and the laws of finance, you are a specialty. You are an eccentricity. You are an oddity. That's a problem. Because for white people, gaining wealth is a regular part of their everyday conversation. Even poor white people are regularly talking about wealth. Black people don't discuss wealth at all. We have to move it from the marginalized status it has and make it a mainstream topic of conversation. Is there an answer? I know you can't just drop a, a, five, a two second answer. No, no. Unity. Here's what I would say with the unity. Again, mm -hmm. unity has to be incorporated into the collective consciousness, which means children have to be socialized to unite with one another. Remember, our kids are socialized to disunite as a principle, right? I've had first graders, six and seven, talking about how black your skin is, how cheap your clothes is, how nappy your hair, you're six. You're just your first year in school, how do you know all this? The parents, we are teaching our kids to be Negroes. So the only way you're gonna undo that is to teach them to be Africans, which is why I want my school to be residential. Because I know, sending them back to the same house that created the illness after school, is gonna undo everything I do from eight to three. You got the kids for 16 hours, I got them for eight. I can't win because the brain is the creature of repetition. Whoever gets to this the most will rule it. What did Adolf Hitler say? Come up with a lie, keep on telling the lie, be consistent with it. It ain't gotta be the truth, but the brain cannot resist the temptation to believe something that is regularly presented before it. Repetition wins. We give our kids the white folks for the first 18 years of their life, then we wanna remake them into Africans for the rest of their life. That's ridiculous. The formidable years of conditioning is birth to 12. Yeah. The formidable years of conditioning is birth to 12. We give that to white people. Right. And then when they turn 21, they already have habituated. Right. They already have a personality. Yeah. They already got hard habits. Right. And now we want to re-Africanize them. Right. Who does that? Right. What right. people have ever gotten free, right. giving the best years yeah. of their children right. to their oppressor, the manipulator? Right.